All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are doing well, and welcome to today's video, which is a look at Mason Mount of Chelsea. We're putting the young central midfielder under the microscope, looking at him this season, and deciding, I guess, whether he's having a good season or not. And how important is he to this Chelsea side? Mason Mount has endured a lot of flack, I guess abuse from the Chelsea fan base uh, towards the latter st stages of this part of the season, I guess. And I want to look at why I can understand frustrations, but really this kind of issue in the Chelsea fan base is essentially what happened last season with Jorginho. He was sort of branded Sari's son. Uh, many fans turned on him and it took him a, a long time to sort of win them back. The same thing is happening this season in many ways with Mason Mount. People are saying he's Lampard's son. Um, you know, Lampard's only playing him because he likes him. And there's a lot of stuff going on there. But we're going to get into it. We're going to look at how Mason Mount actually delivers in, um, in this Chelsea side, what he does essentially. And also we're going to look at why people are getting frustrated with him. So before we get into that, I want to urge you guys to subscribe to Football Therapy. If you've not yet done so, please do hit the bell notifications icon. Why not like the video to help me out? And why not follow me on Instagram? Uh, I do lives on there sometimes. All right. Let's get into it. So, Mason Mount starred in this Chelsea team, exploded in many ways, looked really, really good early doors this season. But let me just take you back quickly. So, Mason Mount is an academy product, academy graduate from Chelsea's academy. How many times can I say academy in a few seconds? Academy. He knuckled down, he went out and did a loan in uh, Vitesse on him in the Eredivisie out in Holland. Performed incredibly well out there as well. Didn't get straight into the team, had to knuckle down, try hard, and at a very young age had a very successful uh, foreign loan deal essentially. Came back, went on loan to uh, Frank Lampard's Derby County, had a good season down there as well. Didn't score that many, didn't assist that many, but yet was still regarded as one of the shining lights. And of course, he's been promoted to the Chelsea first team of the season, whether you want to say it's the transfer ban, but because Frank Lampard does see a lot of good and value in him, he probably would have been in the first team anyway, even if Chelsea signed another central midfielder, maybe not a starter immediately. Now, we're in the beginning of February, and Mason Mount has five Premier League goals and four assists, nearly double digits for goal involvements in the Premier League, which is pretty decent. If he carries on, you know, like this into the second half of the season, that will be an incredibly good return to finish the year, essentially. Now, he shouldn't necessarily be judged on his offensive output, although Chelsea fans uh, are inclined to do so because they're not scoring goals and he often gets into positions where he can score goals. Mason Mount often plays in the left side of a 4-3-3, left centre mid. So does, say, someone like Jorginho Wijnaldum, who's absolutely amazing for Liverpool in many ways. And Wijnaldum has hardly any offensive output. He's got two goals and no assists, and he's played a couple hundred minutes more than Mason Mount this season. So I think he's at over a thousand minutes per goal involvement. But you won't hear Liverpool fans getting on his back because they have goals up front. The problem, of many, well, a big problem with Chelsea is the front three aren't scoring. So when you see Mason Mount making these intelligent runs and not converting, he gets a lot of flack. And I get it. If you're in the attacking position, you need to convert. It's just one of those things. But someone like Wijnaldum, who again, I'm only using him as an example because they might occupy the same space on the pitch. He doesn't need to try and score goals or assist. So you look at someone like Mason Mount and you go, all right then, fair enough. Uh, do something else, what else are you doing? Well, the fact is, he is doing a lot. He's an incredibly versatile player, Mason Mount. This season, he's played in the number 10 behind the striker. He's played in the left wing. He's also played two positions in a 4-3-3 in the central midfield. So he's trusted and has enough tactical awareness to play different parts of the pitch. When Chelsea have people like Jorginho, Kante, and Kovacic, they're all excellent players. And they're much more mature players than Mason Mount. Of course, inherently, they're more mature. They're a lot older. So, you know, there has to be some of the benefit of the doubt there. But none of them really offer the same offensive output as Mason Mount. And like I said, to reiterate, when the front three of Chelsea are misfiring and they're not scoring at all, it's good to have some sort of attacking threat in the central midfield. The important thing about Mason Mount's game is blocking passing lanes and pressing. The way that Chelsea press out of possession is they go into a 4-4-2. All players in the central midfield and forward on actually make a bank of four and the only two players left up are Tammy Abraham and Mason Mount 
and actually they're quite intelligent the way they move and press together. You look at Mason Mount running from minute 1 to minute 90, he doesn't actually stop pressing ever, he always constantly puts pressure on the opposition players in possession. Not only that, if you watch his movement he is actually very good at blocking passing lanes. If you look at the likes of Kovacic and Jorginho, they're much easier to appreciate often at what they're good at because on the ball, for example, someone like Kovacic, he can pass incredibly well and he can also dribble out of the press. He's an immensely good ball carrier, very cultured on the ball, as is Jorginho in many ways, but slightly different. So as spectators and fans, you can really appreciate what they're doing, but off the ball is incredibly important, almost just as important in the team as well. And Mason Mount is incredibly good at that, maybe the best, well, probably the best in the Chelsea team at doing that. That's why Frank Lampard sees him as such an important asset, plays him all the time, and here's the kicker, for my money, plays him too much. So this might sound like a Mason Mount defense video, and in many ways I guess it is, because I want to highlight the factors of his importance off the ball, and the fact how he is actually offering a lot offensively regardless, but there is, there, there is problems there, like of course he assisted both Antonio Rudiger's goals in the draw against Leicester, but he was very, very wasteful in offensive attacking positions. Now, I don't want to be too fast to criticise a young player who's been giving everything for the team and has often been effective throughout the season, but it's up to Frank Lampard now to give him a rest and, and to do some more rotation, because I know he hasn't played as much minutes as Jorginho Wijnaldum, who I was using as a comparison for offensive metrics, he does do a lot more pressing. Like Someone like Wijnaldum can sit back a lot, and really someone like Mason Mount is just constantly mobile. So really my biggest two criticisms are him being overplayed, I understand why fans want him to be rotated out, and him being wasteful in the final third, but really, to be honest, that is the story of Chelsea's outfield players season, really. You know, from Tammy Abraham to hudson Adoy to even Pulisic, Willian, all of them, really. But the forwards have less tactical um, responsibility than the midfielders. Not much, because obviously the wingers do track back, like Pulisic, uh, Willian, hudson Adoy is learning to do it, even though he's in a, still in a sort of embryonic phase of his Premier League career. But someone like Mason Mount, the midfielders, he's worked under the manager for so, so long, he carries out his tactical instruction incredibly well. Just people when they watch games, like the, you know Chelsea fans, they quite rightly get frustrated when you know he can't convert a chance that comes to his feet. You know, like many other Chelsea players at the moment as well. But a couple more goals to see him into like 11 cold contributions, I think, would change the whole complexion of people's perception of his season. The truth is, I don't really doubt his ability. I've seen him score goals uh, for, you know, Vita SRM, Derby, and Chelsea. I think he's a very good finisher when he's in confidence. I feel like his work rate is still up there. But at the moment, it will be a huge test of the young Chelsea player's mentality. How will he deal with this criticism of the Chelsea fan base? You know, all saying he's only getting played because Lampard likes him, which I guess is the reason why managers play any players, but you know what I mean. I don't feel like he's blocking playtime for Kovacic, Jorginho, or N'Golo Kante. I genuinely feel like it's a player profile thing. Sure, all those players can press, or, well, maybe not Jorginho, but certainly Kovacic and Kante can press, but the way um, Mason Mount blocks passing lanes and the way he presses the opposition defenders the other players just simply don't do that and I'd get as well if you know Kante or Kovacic had some more goals why they'd just have to play every single game but the truth is they don't Mason Mount has the most goals from the central midfield he has four assists on top of that and he's getting into goal scoring positions and you know those opportunities he's kind of to be honest man his story is very very similar to Tammy Abraham this season because they're both making the right runs they're both executing the tactical plan quite well just in front of goal they're not finishing their dinner as the expression goes that's obviously something that really really frustrated Frank Lampard but I want to sort of take the opportunity to sort of present this video about Mason Mount, get some people to think a little bit more deeper, watch how he plays off the ball as well and how important that is um, and how he can put pressure on the opposition players. He started the season very very well and everyone was talking about him and he obviously came through some difficulty. I think maybe he got fatigued as well and the sort of burst of adrenaline youth sort of fizzled out a little bit. But really, in terms of player profile, he is incredibly important and can do well at Chelsea. And I think by the end of the season, looking back at his numbers, his stats, and how he played in the team in terms of tactical instruction, 
I think this will be regarded as a very, very good debut season for Mason Mount at Chelsea. And I just want to end on this, um, a, tw a tweet that I thought I quite enjoyed by Viali's Chelsea, someone I follow on Twitter. Lampard signed for the Blues when he was 23 years old. His first season under Ranieri, he played 37 Premier League games and he scored five goals and assisted two. It took Lampard three seasons to really make his mark on the team in the Premier League. Think about that, he signed when he was 23, took to when he was 26. So Mason Mount signed for Chelsea when he was like, well sorry, signed for Chelsea, went into the Chelsea first team when he was 20 years old, three years younger than Lampard. He's played 21 Premier League games and he's got five goals and five assists. Uh, but some people already want him out. So basically he's saying he's already surpassed Lampard's first season entirely at the beginning of February. Um, he's three years younger, but people are getting on his back. Sure, Chelsea are more of an elite team now as they were back then, but it just goes to show you've got to nourish these young players that have shown promise rather than get on their backs. Like I said, hopefully by the end of the season, Mason Mount will have good numbers stacked up. Hopefully Chelsea, if they need to, you know buy another super midfielder say someone like Barkley goes who knows and by then hopefully the forwards will be firing or Chelsea can buy reinforcements up front to actually convert goals so there'll be less scrutiny on the midfielders in terms of offensive numbers and metrics anyway what do you guys think get down in the comments let me know your thoughts and opinions on Mason Mount's season so far do you think by the end of the season he could have I don't know 10 goals 10 assists because that would be superb or do you think he's just going to sort of fizzle out let me know get down in the comments remember to subscribe if you're new to the channel you lot enjoy the football and i will see you later you ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck i'ma get it how i'm living i'ma walk the walk outline my lines i rap through thought body bag the verse outlined in chuck in my life seen trouble hustle on the double silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle yo chick like to guzzle bad boy stay in trouble i only love this paper sorry i don't i love me baby